Are we ready? Okay. So, hello and every hello and welcome everyone. I am your host Amit Chaturvedi, Associate Director for Client Relations for UK NZ in Ireland at IDP Education South Asia. And today I have got a guest in Dr. Kamran Masroof, Maroof, and he is going to talk about artificial intelligence. He is from University of Bradford, a subject which is of course of interest to a large number of people around the world. Uh, and I know a lot is changing around artificial intelligence because of artificial intelligence, with artificial intelligence, and likewise. And I'm sure uh, this session is going to be really insightful in this area where we get to know what research Kamran is into, what research he has done in the past, and what impact it had on the industry. And I'm saying all this as I talk about Kamran. Of course, he is uh, an academic and an assistant professor in supply chain at the University of Bradford. He has an extensive practical experience having worked in various positions in industry for leading companies, including most recently for Morrison's. He led various company-wide business improvement projects. His PhD investigated the role and impact of data analytics in the public sector, particularly with the, the healthcare, which I think is very, very critical in these times. I'm sure Kamran will throw some lights on how the information collected and used in the artificial intelligence formats helped our healthcare industry as such improvise and if at all there is any intelligence around the COVID situations, that will be really interesting to hear from you. He's an uh, experienced academic and continues to hold a strong connection in many industries through his ongoing research. His industrial experience and interests have helped shape and research, his research interests. He's actively researching in the area of artificial intelligence, social media analytics, organizational power dynamics, and social impact of emerging technologies. He has been publishing regularly in high quality peer reviewed journals, and he's also a fellow of the UK Higher Education Academy. So a lot which I can see Kamran you are into, and I'm sure our students who possibly have expressed interest in UK as a destination have made an application, our offer holders, some who are not yet at that stage, maybe considering UK, possibly considering the subject which you have to talk today, so I'm sure the insights which you will give on subject, on the current situation in UK, because we got to know the classes have resumed from 17th in a face-to-face -face, uh, system and model. So there's a lot of expectations from our Indian students who would like to hear a lot about the subject current situation in UK at the institution. And if there's anything which uh, you can talk in terms of maybe a scholarship or bursary in the area of your subjects, which may further enthuse and entice our students to possibly take a quick call is really going to be beneficial and I'm sure they'll really appreciate. So without further ado, let me invite Dr. Kamran Maruf to take over the session and give you a whole lot of insights. Thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you very much, Amit, for the introduction. Uh, first of all, uh, again, a, a more wider thanks to IDP team, to Jostna for, for organising and arranging this, and for Jay Shree, of course, our regional lead out in Dubai, uh, for also asking me to cover the session. Um, so again, today I'll be talking a little bit about, uh, just to sort of break down the session of what's expected, um, I'll talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. Um, I'll talk a bit about some of the research that I have done in this particular space. Uh, and then hopefully towards the end, you know, I'll be talking about, about the program that I actually lead. Uh, so I lead the Applying Artificial Intelligence and Data Analytics uh, program uh, here at the University of Bradford. Um, and again, I, I'd hopefully want some interactions, any questions around the content, but more so around coming and possibly study, studying um, in Bradford. So more formally, just to bore you a little bit about 
uh, my background, I think Amit has done a very good job in giving you some context. So um, I am an assistant professor in supply chain analytics, um, come from industry. So pretty much a lot of my research that I do um, is, is, is pretty much ties with um, some of uh, the real practical challenges faced in, in different sectors. And, and I'll be talking a little bit about that. Um, actively researching in applied artificial intelligence, data analytics, um, and more so recently with, uh, with supply chain, given um, my background and professional uh, experience. Um, so I am actually the program leader for a number of programs here at the university. Um, I'm program leader for our undergraduate portfolios of the analytics program. So management and business analytics and finance and business analytics as well. And then more recently, um, I have taken on the program leadership for our, our new applied AI and data analytics MSc postgraduate degree. Um, now, this is a, a new program which was launched in September, and hopefully I'll be talking towards the latter part of this session um, about this program. So, so, so please do, if you've got any questions uh, regarding this, please feel free to, to put them into the chat as we talk about this. So again, a bit of a backdrop to AI first. Then we look at some of the trends. Um, as the session states, uh, and I think it's quite clear in the title um, of which angle that I'm pretty much taking, uh, my personal opinion and my informed opinion, I would say from the research that I am doing is, you know, artificial intelligence isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, uh, so what does that mean for businesses? What does that mean for, for managers, regardless of which industry and sector you're in? Uh, Amit alluded to, of course, I've, I've done research in the healthcare space. I'm researching in the construction sector, looking at the role of AI. Um, I am um, actively researching supply chain, retail. So, so there's all these different industries that can leverage a lot of benefit and value from AI. So what does that mean for, for potential students? And, and that's hopefully my underlying message today. Um, and then I'll be pleased to share some, some research that I've done in this space, which again, amplifies why I feel there is absolutely the need for students to try to, to capture those, those skills as we go forward. So one of the things that I always ask um, colleagues um, when I'm out researching and, and, and speaking to, to participants in the research and even to students is, first of all, why artificial intelligence, okay? Um, the provenance, you know, many, uh, many, many years ago, you could argue artificial intelligence did exist. Um, however, why is it ever so? Why is it so relevant now than it has been um, before? So, so why AI and why is now the right time? Um, and again, sort of jumping towards uh, the, the the program uh, that I am I am leading, uh, it was actually developed through consultation with industry partners, um, and and again there was a huge emphasis placed on the timing and actually now is the time and hopefully I'll be able to support that with some statistics uh, and some forecasts from various different outlets. So the first thing I think that you may all agree with is the fact that we often see data as being referred to as the new oil, okay? You may have come across this statement, um, you may have seen it in, in adverts or on, on, on magazines or news articles or news vlogs. Um, and the whole idea pretty much is that, you know, there's so much value that can be captured from data. And there are many examples of organizations leveraging and using data to really add value to the organization. Um, and again, one of the things that I always say, similar to oil, similar to oil is data in its rawest form. Uh, may not necessarily be of value. It needs to go through refinement process, okay? So there is a need to understand what that refinement process entails. There is the need to understand what value can we actually gain from the data, okay? Um, and again, one of the things that I always place emphasis on is if you are looking to engage in a technology, you at least need to know what are the, 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 the perceived benefits of that technology. OK, and again, that is um, uh, another reason as to why I think it's very important to create awareness around what AI can do and maybe what 
AI, artificial intelligence can't do. And again, all of this is underpinned and driven by data. So let's look at some statistics. Um, so uh, again, you know, it, I mean, I could throw so many, uh, you know, statistics your way. But one of the things that I really wanted to place emphasis on, uh, you know, during this session is actually the amount of worldwide spending on on AI systems. And there is, a, you know, it's predicted that there will be 97.9 billion US dollars spent by 2023 on artificial intelligence systems. So be it infrastructure, um, be it techniques, be it developing um, systems uh, to, 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 uh, to implement and apply AI in the workplace, in the public sector, in the private sector, and, and so on and so forth. So, so again, uh, you know, let's talk, turn the story here. There's all this investment taking place, okay, in a particular thing. It could be AI, it could be anything, okay? What are you doing as students? And, and again, it's a critical reflective question that let's say in the next few years, there'll be all these fantastic systems uh, and all this investment taking place. But what are you all actually doing in order to leverage benefit from those systems? Again, it comes back to the skills piece. And, and there is a huge shift towards a very data driven um, industry, regardless of which sector we look at, regardless of which context, whether we're talking about developing or developed contexts, um, you know, there is a huge, huge need for those skills, those AI related data skills, the data savvy skills. So again, as part of this, and again, I'm jumping back to um, what we have, uh, what we have done here um, in in the UK in particular is um, that the UK government has, has realised uh, um, that actually um, it's one of our strategic priorities to ensure that we are supporting uh, students with the, those AI skill sets. So by uh, you know, and, and they envision. Um, that there was an open call by Office for Students, OFS, and the Department of Culture, Media, and Sports. Um, that you know, at least by 2023, you know, we will have a shortfall, a shortage of AI and data scientists or, or data specialists. So, so again, a, a practical problem. All this investment is happening. The world is moving towards AI, but we don't have the skills. And again, for me, I think that's an, a huge opportunity. Again, some statistics on, you know, there's been an exponential rise in uh, postgraduate programs taught in the field of artificial intelligence and enrollment has in recent years doubled. Um, uh, and, and again, it shows the trend, the market trend and, and the fact that actually students um, are taking notice and are understanding the importance of, uh, of, 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 of AI. OK. Now, again, just to support this a little bit more, the Future for Jobs report by the World Economic Forum has also placed absolutely huge emphasis on certain skills. And what they say is by 2025, there will be certain skills which will be highly valued in the workplace. OK, now this is where hopefully we could differentiate slightly from not just talking about AI and data analytics from a very technical point of view, but looking at it from also a soft factor. OK, so I, I you know, I, I'm aware that there may be students on here, students who are looking, uh, watching this live on Facebook, thinking, you know, what, everything you're saying, Cameron, seems to be brilliant. Um, However, I don't really have the technical skills or, you know, I don't have a, a statistical background. So, so that might even be a, a, a situation uh, that you find yourselves in. And, and this is why what, what we want to sort of pitch here at the university is that's not really a problem. You know, what we're looking to do and what we're looking to create is an applied program, which we have, of course, got in, in, in operation now and in place, is where we're not just looking at the data from a very technical point of view, but as the World Economic Forum talks about, is having that analytical thinking, being able to actually have creativity um, and, and innovation and, and, and using that data in that particular way. So, you know, the call isn't necessarily that um, the programs that we have are for those with an AI background. Absolutely not. The idea, in fact, is, you know, what we're looking to do is create a conversion course where 
those with absolutely no background in these technologies are able to understand how these technologies are all being applied. Uh, and on the right hand side of your screen, what you'll see is we have something called at the, Univers at the University of Bradford School of Management, our Career Booster Week. So here, all students, undergraduate and postgraduate have the opportunity to attend um, uh, workshops which map against what the World Economic Forum state are the growing skills. And again, these are delivered by academics like ourselves, as well as consultants. And this is all free of charge for students. So again, it's not, AI is very important, but it's about then building and understanding the importance of AI in a practical sense. Okay. Um, again, some more statistics, you know, you know, job listings recently explored on LinkedIn, on Indeed, Simply Hired, you know, uh, some of your large recruitment sites um, are looking at, are, are looking for people with certain technical skills. Okay. So Python, okay, R, SQL, Hadoop, MapReduce, all these are techniques, uh, are, are skills that are highly, highly sought after in the workplace. And I'm going to park this conversation here now and then move to um, so what AI actually is, uh, you know, and, and again, looking at it from a non-technical point of view as well. And then I'll really tell you what we have done at the university in order to really help um, achieve achieve. The So it's, it's very clear from what's been stated, from the, the, the forecast and budgeting, how much is looking to be, be spent across industries, how much is being allocated by, by governments across the world, uh, that you know AI is, is, is going somewhere and there is going to be a, a lot of interest in the near future. Um, but what we also realise is that whilst the technology and investment is here, the skills are here so there is a, a huge gap um, which needs to be fulfilled okay so again a huge opportunity for anyone who who is looking for a career change who, who thinks actually um you know i, I want to do something different and i want to pick up those skills because there will be a market for you all there so the question and the critical question and going back to the title of this session is are you ready is you know, regardless of which sector you want to be in, I mean, I am from a management school, so I place a lot of emphasis on speaking to managers, understanding their needs, and, and, and for me, it's about how important are these technical skills, these data-driven skills for you all, and is there a need to transform? Okay, um, and and again, as per the World Economic Forum, you know, jobs growing in, in demand are roles such as data analysts, AI specialists, big data specialists, okay? So, so these are all the roles that you will find there's an increasing demand for, and again, given the lack of skill sets. Further to the World Economic Forum, you know, it's stated by, you know, approximately 50% of all um, of all employees will need reskilling by 2025. And again, I can't place the emphasis enough on the role of data in all of this. The, the emphasis on, if I go back a slide or two, to these these technical skills that are, that are going to be needed. So you can't simply just be a manager anymore and run the business just off intuition, which is important. Uh, but there is a need to have those technical skills as well. Okay. Um, again, the Harvard Business Review. Very recently, you know, I have I've put out um, an article um, and, and and talk about the fact that actually AI could liberate fifty percent of managers' time. Okay. So it's one very important to have the skills, but then also realizing what benefit it can have for you as a future manager or who's for, so for someone who wants to um, who, who wants to have that impact in the workplace okay I just thought I'd put a, an infographic on you know all the different areas in which AI is being used you know from entertainment I think through to insurance um, you know from social media to agriculture, I research in the area of agriculture, looking at the role of AI drones, you know, you will find it, it, it's very pervasive in its nature. Okay, so now I've built, hopefully, a, a bit of a backdrop into the importance of AI. I think it's very important to realize that we can't escape it. And, and when I am doing my research, and there is this 
natural um, the disposition that some people have who may be non-technical that actually it's not our problem. Someone in the department will look at it. Whereas I believe from my own perspective of being in the industry, you know, AI has to be integrated as part of the strategy. Everyone within the organization needs to be aware of how it's being used and its applications as well. So I've said a lot about AI. Some of you may have an understanding of what AI is. Others may be thinking, okay, you know, what are the key areas? What are the key domains? So I just thought I'd quickly post some of these here um, for you all. So, you know, within AI, we find uh, the, the, the concept of machine learning. Okay, so machine learning then branches further into two further uh, different uh, approaches. There's supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Um, sort of the easiest way I try to explain this to to some of our non-technical students as well is, you know, your supervised learning is you uh, you are aware of what you're looking out for. Okay, you have labelled input and output data. Okay, so you will, for instance, run an algorithm which identifies a cat. Okay, so you label the cat, and then the algorithm will look at all different animals, and it, it will identify actually this is a cat based on the labelled data. Uh, your own supervised is is more of a free for all. Um, it's clustering together the data and really letting the data find patterns within itself. Okay, so you may want to run something uh, around trying to identify what items are purchased together, for example, um, in a supermarket. Okay, um, so so again, we could get very technical. You know, supervised learning has regression, uh, classification, uh, uh, almost supervised learning is, is more related to association and clustering. Uh, but again, broadly speaking, machine learning branches off into these elements, again, within AI. Another domain of, of AI is then robotics. Okay, vision and robotics. So the use of robots or collaborative robots referred to as cobots. Um, and often with, with robots, you will find it's something that we refer to as narrow AI. Okay, so the robot could do one task extremely well with almost zero margin of error. Okay. Um, but it may not necessarily be able to do other things, okay? So it may not necessarily have cognitive uh, abilities. So we have the machine learning side, then we have the robotics. Um, then we have the natural language processing, okay? So this is the whole idea of, of, of the systems being able to have a discussion, be able to interpret what is being said and being able to respond as a result of that. So our chatbots, okay, often you may be on your, uh, uh, you know, trying to renew your contract, your insurance online, uh, and you'll be talking to a chatbot, you know, rather than someone who sat there live. So, so again, that's another branch of, of artificial intelligence. Um, and then we have artificial life. So, so again, a bit more complex um, and something that I refer to as, as, as biomimicry. So the whole idea here is trying to look at, um, the world's a perfect place. So looking at natural systems, looking at nature, and then having systems um, and trying to get systems to mimic how nature um, uh, react, how, how nature takes its course. So example I often give is, um, again, collaborative swarm AI. So looking at how several AI applications can be used together. And we've got a picture of a swarm of what should be, um, uh, I think, birds, um, if, if you was to maybe enlarge the, the image. So again, it's more technical, uh, a bit more sophisticated, but it's about the collective um, uh, the collective element of AI. So, so there would be four of the, so I would say, broad domains of artificial intelligence. Now, I wanna just move on to, um, now that you've got a background of the importance of AI, uh, the, the statistics you've looked at, hopefully, and understood that there'll be a huge gap in, in AI uh, skills. We've had just a very quick overview of the different domains in which AI can go into. Um, and now I want to present you research, with, which again goes back to my point of AI is here. Are you ready? Okay. Um, so, so I um, researched uh, the, the area of looking at artificial intelligence within a warehousing perspective, which was published in the International
Journal of Information Management. Um, and the case context pretty much was a, a large, a very large distribution center here in the UK, um, which has um, uh, various different um, uh, uh, food produce uh, being produced, stored and distributed from this actual site to the tune of at least 5 million items go out weekly. So this particular organization was looking to explore artificial intelligence um, and essentially um, uh, there were a few challenges, uh, so, so myself, uh, I went in and, and, and really tried to understand what the barriers were, what the opportunities were uh, regarding AI. And again, I'm not going to go through each and every finding of the research. My my focus was mainly on understanding um, whether AI can be applied in the warehouse and what the blockers were, but also looking at what skills would be required and needed. Okay, and and for me. Um, you know, one of the things that pretty much came out was, you know, the warehouse is ready, okay, but the people aren't. Similar to AI is here, but are you ready? And and you probably see why, you know, I'm referring to this. So the the the, the warehouse had all the capabilities, the technical infrastructure, everything was in place, but again, the people factor was was lacking. So um, we we conducted interviews with the the colleagues here again, senior managers, um, uh, shift operational managers, those who were leading teams, the business improvement managers, um, and we conducted some thematic analysis based on that. Of the key findings, um, we had adoption challenges, of course, uh, as you always sometimes do, uh, teething problems, uh, which happens with the integration of any new system. There were infrastructure issues and layout issues, but the most prominent theme was the skills, the technical skills. Okay, and again, this is for me the perspective of, yes, we're not expecting operational managers to do technical things, but they need to have an understanding of what the technology can do. Okay, and, and again, here, this is why for me, doing a course which gives you those foundational skills, even if you don't want to be a data scientist, is very, very important for your for your career progression and for your career aspirations. Okay. Um, again, it seemed like there was a focus less on the technology, but more on direct productivity. So again, short term goals without really understanding the long term impact and benefit the technology can have. OK, um, they uh, they found uh, managing the technical data very difficult. Uh, and again, we're talking about a, a very prominent and large um, UK um, organization here. Uh, again, there was more reliance on on actually the, the 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 human element rather than the technical element. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but the argument that I'm trying to make, and, and again, what came out from the research was um, that there has to be at least a balance. I'm not expecting a 50-50 balance, uh, nor were the managers who we spoke to, but at least having those underlying skills. Um, and perceptions, okay, uh, one of the things uh, that we do a lot on the program is, on, on our MSc Applied AI program, is to really get you to understand what the technology can do. So it seemed like many of the managers felt AI was unrealistic. So when we spoke about some of the benefits AI can have, they didn't really buy into it. Um, they saw it as a threat, so they actually felt it's going to threaten our jobs. And of course, there is a discussion around um, automation and the impact that can have. Um, again, a separate discussion in itself. Um, but again, they did find it. And I've got a quote here where one of the, the, the shift managers said, it all seems very futuristic and sci-fi like. You know, we wouldn't be ready for that in the next 50 years. But in actual fact, you know, it's happening. It's happening now. And there is a need to have that mindset. Again, it's 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 skill sets and mindsets, and that was something um, that we really wanted to 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 place emphasis on. So um, within this research and and also research that I've done in the healthcare space, you know, it was very it was very evident that there's a threat perception of the technology. Um, there seems to be an understanding that the technology will completely take over everything, and I think that there is a need to understand 
what the technology can and can't do, what the challenges are of the technology. By no way am I, I sitting here today talking about how AI is perfect. There are many challenges that need to be uh, addressed, ethical issues around the use of AI. It needs to be used in a responsible manner. There's AI biases. Um, so all those things exist. Absolutely, they exist. But again, it's also looking at what it can do and being able to have that, that dialogue and manage that within an organizational setting. So essentially, for, for me, um, it was, uh, um, you know, this was just a meme, if, if you want to call it that, is um, this was an organization and this particular one was one that um, was engaging in, in AI and the expectation was very different to the, to the reality. Um, and again, it's, ra it's about understanding, you know, not to just glorify the AI, but to understand how can it work in your context? How can the AI technology work to fulfill the needs of your organization? Okay, um, and not not implementing the technology because everyone else is doing it. Okay, so, so using it for that purpose. And, and again, the, in its applied sense, why are we using it? What benefit will it create? Is it having an impact on the business? Do what is the business case? All these things really need to be understood. Um, and then again, sort of this research contributed in terms of uh, furthering industry for warehousing research, looking particularly at the the mindsets of of, of managers. We looked at awareness, uh, transforming um, them from understanding. Uh, on being reactive to being proactive. So managers then did appreciate that through the algorithms, uh, you could actually forecast in advance, you could do predictive modeling, you could actually be more proactive than reacting to challenges and issues. Again, within the healthcare space, there's a huge talk about AI, using algorithms to predict uh, disease spread and all these things as well. Um, and again it, it, again, it goes down to the role of data and understanding data as well. So um, just keeping an eye on the time as well. You know, we have all this happening, which is great. So let's go back to the start of the slides. Um, there's a need to understand why AI is staying. There's all this investment happening. There's a lack of skills. The World Economic Forum talk about actually by 2025, there's going to be so many roles that are not going to be fulfilled simply enough. OK. Um, and uh, then we looked at different types of AI. So the machine learning side, there's robotics. You know, we looked at um, national language processing techniques. Uh, we looked at um, artificial life, looking at swarm AI, looking at biomimicry. Um, and then again, an example of research that I've, I've recently published in which again, the skills were a key challenge. The technology was able, and it, it will always be able to do what it does, but there's issues of skills. So all that's on one side. So what are we then doing at the university and hopefully what students will be interested in, in hearing? So we launched, as I said, and I'm, I'm proud to actually say that, that the program is the largest recruiting program at the University of Bradford. And we launched this in September. OK, so it's the largest recruiting program so far um, on uh, across the, the board. And if you remember, I mentioned that we had a lot of input from from industry partners. OK, so one of the things that the program pretty much. So, so firstly, we, we actually secured funding. OK, so we, we secured just around about under a million UK pounds, um, uh, around 800,000, I believe it was the exact figure um, uh, to fund this project from OFS. OK, so Office for Students. Um, and there was a need for us to actually create a program which helps people from underrepresented uh, communities to gain AI skills. OK, so if you remember uh, a few minutes ago, I spoke about there are challenges with AI. And one of the challenges is there are only a certain set of people, if that's one way of putting it, who have this particular skill or those who have had uh, the, the, the access um, to um, to these skill sets. So what we've done here at the university is we've tried to create a, 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 an environment where students from non-technical backgrounds, okay, you may have done history, you may have done arts, um, you may have done biology, <clears throat> you could all join the course. So it's giving you those foundational skills. Um, a, 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 
another focus of the actual program is also providing this for students from um, a BAME community, so Black, Asian, ethnic minority backgrounds, because again, there's a lack of this representation when it comes to the field of AI. So we had a number of industry partners who, um, who, who signed letters of support for us, some leading organizations that we are working with, SAS Analytics, one of the largest analytical platforms you will find, AWS, you know, doesn't need an introduction, Amazon Web Services, um, you know, we have micro badging on the program as well. So we co-designed our, our program. So again, all these inputs were from industry partners, um, from students, from academics and stakeholders. And what we've done is, you know, it's not a, a traditional computer science degree, okay? It's not just around the technology, okay? It goes beyond that. So what we have done is we've tried to provide a, a real applied focus. While you're looking at real case study examples and where you also are working in industry. So as part of the program, you have a three months placement, which sits at the end of the program. Okay. And this program then allows you to then, and we have someone who works for the university who will help source these placement opportunities. Um, and, and then you'll be working as part of the program as well. Um, so there's micro badging. So in addition to your, your degree, you will be able to, within the, uh, the period of uh, the year, uh, you have the opportunity then to do online courses delivered via uh, various different platforms and you get those digital badges or micro badges um, to, to support you. And again, to build that technical CV uh, that's so sought after. Um, and again, the tools, so Python, introduction to Python, introduction to R, and, and many, many other leading, you know, t technical um, applications and, and platforms. So again, a skills focus, an, an orientation on the skills, uh, and not just uh, the knowledge, it's bringing both of them together. And, um, you know, we pretty much, like I said, you know, it's the, the, the program is open and, and it's not necessarily for those who are just from a technical, a science, technology, engineering background, uh, mathematical background, but again, for those who may not necessarily have that background either. Uh, we deliver, again, these are just a handful of the specialist vendors that we are working with. Um, uh, Tableau, R, there's open source um, um, coding. And again, it's for those with a non-technical background who want to gain those skills. But equally, if you do have a technical background, you're again, more than welcome to join because the focus is on, is on applied AI. How is that being used in the organizations, in businesses, and what is the impact of that? So if you remember several slides ago, I had put on there the, um, a slide from the World Economic Forum. And within that, we spoke about technical skills, but also those creative skills, those analytical skills. Um, so within the program, we've incorporated the technical skills. We've incorporated those soft skills as well within our modules, within our career booster week. And again, those institutional skills that are going to be important for you as leaders, uh, future leaders in business, okay? Um, so we have OFS scholarships uh, to, to, to put it out there. Uh, we had funding to fund 60 scholarships over three years. It's a very, very competitive process. I must say, um, as you could imagine, the idea was uh, to, to explore uh, and provide scholarship for people from these following nine underrepresented groups. Uh, and that is uh, the eligibility for, for the, the scholarship. And that scholarship then means there's 10,000 uh, pounds, which is paid uh, towards via the university to the student who can then pay it towards the tuition fees or, or during their day-to-day -day costings as well. Um, so what is the output? So what we're hoping and what we are envisioning is through the program, through the skills gained on the program, you know, you will we'll have, um, uh, we provide the platform for you to become AI and data science professionals. Um, there's roles such as graduate analysts, uh, technology consultants, 
um, you know, or you even if you want to start up your own, you know, tech business, you know, we're providing you with those skills to help further um, uh, your, um, your 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 career aspirations. So thank you all for listening. I was mindful and I was trying to speed because I want to save some time for questions. I always like to have an interactive session. Uh, rather than just go 100 miles per hour and, and end it on that note. So my email is here if you've got any questions about the program, about the content, and so on and so forth. Um, I'll leave that there. And now I'd like to pass back to, um, to, to Amit and Co to see if there are any questions that you had regarding the content. Uh, regarding studying in the UK, I know you may have many questions given the ongoing pandemic situation, um, and, and now is the time. So, so I'll now pass back to to IDP, um, and then hopefully we, we have a few questions uh, coming through. Anyone from IDP want to any any questions come through? No, what I shall do is I will look at anything in the chat in the meanwhile. Hi, Kamran. So are we waiting for uh, the questions? Yes, yes. Any questions, please. I think uh, I'd want to dedicate maybe the next five to ten minutes on, on any questions that, that, that you may have or students have put forward. Uh, I would just check if we have any questions on the FB Live. In the meanwhile, please, please sure. put in your questions in the chat box, um, guys. OK, good. So um, Binish has asked a question, will there be face-to-face -face classes from September? Um, so we have adopted a blended learning approach during this last panic, uh, pandemic situation, uh, this last semester, where the sessions were delivered online and on campus. Um, we have a strong um, indication that we will be moving back to face-to-face -face classes and online sessions as well. So a way to put this is I think before the situation got out of hand, we had um, around 80% of content, 70 to 80% online, and the rest was on campus in a social distanced manner. Um, I think there will be a reversal of that. Again, it depends on the programs. On my program in particular, there will be face-to-face -face lectures and seminars, uh, and then also online content as well. Um, both synchronous and asynchronous deliveries um, uh, on online. So uh, there will be a mixture, but yes, we, we do expect um, to go back online. Um, so in terms of, so another question has come through in my direct message, thank you. So what is the process in terms of um, applying application times? So we have two intakes. Okay, so one intake is um, in September 2021, and the other intake is in January. Um, so my recommendation would be is if you're looking to apply for September, and in particular, if you're looking to apply uh, for the scholarship, then it's best to get started now. The details are on the website to apply, but in general, you want to be getting your applications in um, and, and, and Again, with visa and everything else, you want to be making sure that you're starting to begin that process now. Um, if there's any more particular uh, sort of questions around the exact timings, I know uh, Jay Shri has kindly joined us on the session. So, so um, you know, if there's anything more, Jay Shri, you want to add, uh, do drop it into the the chat, and, and I could share that as well. But there are two intakes for the program. Um, Another question's come through. Da, 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 da. Yep, so thank you for the question, Akila, around uh, whether someone who's got a background in BE electronics and engineering is eligible for the program. Absolutely. So I am the program leader, and I've had a number of requests come through from students who have already done MSCs. So MSCs in engineering, MSCs in, um, in, in oil and gas refinement, and, and all sorts of weird and wonderful um, uh, programs that, again, you 
you wouldn't traditionally associate with the School of Management, but because it's applied AI, and what we do find is within these sectors, there is the role of technology, the role of AI, um, uh, you know, you are absolutely um, uh, eligible to, 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 to apply to that. Um, another good question has come through regarding what programs included in the data science curriculum for developing soft skills in management. Can you please elaborate on that? So, so our, our program is as such then, so we have some specialist core modules which focus on the data science side. So for example, in semester one, if you join in, in September, you have um, business data analytics, where we deliver you some of the technical analytical softwares and expose you to those techniques. Then you also have AI, responsible AI in the first semester as well. In the second semester, you have AI and data science and you have applied machine learning and big data strategy. So they are your core modules. Then the softer skills are provided through modules such as um, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, cross-cultural management, um, you have the opportunity of sitting on an international summer school, for example, and that international summer school essentially uh, exposes you to a variety of, of different topics and themes that we have. So it's a one week block during the summer, which is sometimes around circular economy and, and technology management. Um, so those are the kind of modules then that you will be able to identify. There's also emerging issues in logistics and supply chain. So these are the type of modules that you essentially um, will be um, able to sit on. But, but again, you know, I've often emphasized the career booster week. So in the career booster week, you know, you have two weeks and I, and I didn't mention this earlier, you have something called, we have something called the higher um, education achievement report. So if students are captured in 25 hours, of activity during the career booster week. So this is where no lectures take place. So one week in semester one and another week in semester two, there will be workshops. So there will be soft skills such as art of negotiation, um, um, emotional agility, emo you know, um, how to be resilient and all these, you get workshops and these will be on your transcriptions as well. So in addition to the program, there's also extra curricular stuff that pretty much allows you um, to, to, to have that, um, that footing. Another question has come through in the direct message um, is can a postgraduate in statistics can do the program? Yeah, absolutely. So again, like I said, you know, the program is for STEM background and non-STEM background. So those who have statistical, uh, technical, mathematical backgrounds and those who don't have it as well. Good. Okay, I've got a direct question here from someone regarding placements and what is the situation with the placements and do we source them? Okay, so we have someone who's working in-house at the university, um, so who's dedicated to our program and what those colleagues pretty much do is they will help source placements which take place three months after your dissertation is handed in. So if you was to start in September, you will be finishing in September the following year. If you start in January, however, you will have three extra months on your program. So January intake means you will be graduating the following March. Um, and as per your visa, uh, you are able to have those three months um, within which you do your placement as well. So, so that, of course, is um, you, you would be eligible to that as well. Um, another question in the direct, a lot of direct messages being sent here. Will AI and data science coexist in the future or will AI take over most of the data science, analytics and other fields? Good, interesting question. I think there is always, it's important for us to realize the overlap um, between them. I think if you're looking at some of the very basic statistical uh, approaches, um, I think, uh, you know, the data and, and the data science will always underpin what is happening within the AI space. Within the AI, again, if we break it down further, then we have the machine learning where, again, it, it starts going towards the automation side of things. So I think, um, uh, again, it depends on, 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 on how you understand the terms, okay? There, there's many different, there's a plethora of definitions for AI, a plethora of definitions for data science. Some use them interchangeably, um, some use them distinctively. And I think the way I pr pretty much see this is, you know, AI is the umbrella term, 
within that we have um, many analytical techniques, but a subset of this AI and, and where there is overlap is the data science perspectives. Um, and again, remember, the more data we're collecting, the more sophisticated you can be with your techniques. So under, data is essentially underpinning, uh, underpinning all of what we see uh, in, in that space. Um, any other, so thank you for that question, um, uh, Vishnu. Any questions um, from our Facebook um, audience? Do we have um, anyone? Right, Carmen. So I checked. Uh, there are no uh, questions as sure. such. There was a comment mentioning uh, they were not able to see your slides clearly, but uh, this this video would be posted on live and will be there on our Facebook uh, page. So you can refer to it. You can come back to it and refer to it and post your questions if you have any after that. So, um, right. I think uh, those are all the questions for you, I suppose. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being here and for, for the audience both here during this session and on Facebook um, live. Um, again, often, you know, your questions come afterwards. So, so feel free to drop me a line more than happy. I am the program leader. I work very closely. I've worked very closely in, in developing the program. Um, we have many students who have joined from South Asia, many Indian students as well on the program. Um, and uh, you know, and they are they are really enjoying the program. I think last year has been challenging for everyone, um, uh, but one of the things that we are looking to do is is is, is to uh, to continue on and support um, our students, both home and international students. So please do drop me a line, and you will you will definitely um, uh, hear back from me if, if you do uh, send me an email. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Kamran, for the session today. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to post the Facebook link just so everybody could just pick it up and uh, watch whenever they would like to watch the session. Uh, I would uh, bring the session to an end now, Kamran. I'll just uh, pause the live.